It looks like everyone has all settled in. Isn't Monica gonna kick off some activity for the club? I mean, she is the president and all. Eh, maybe another day. Hmm. Ah, that's right. I wanted to spend a little bit of time with Natsuki today. I kinda wanna see what kind of manga she'd like. Ugh! Huh? That. Dang it! <laughs> I seriously gotta wait like a whole second. Huh? That sounded like it came from the closet. Maybe I should go and check it out. I proceed to walk over to where the noise came from and see Natsuki reaching for stuff in the closet. Hey! What's happening? It's not her, it's me. Hey, what's happening over here? God dang, Monica! Never putting my stuff back in the right spot! What's the use in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Dang, this girl's speaking the truth. Wait, collection? What kind of collection, though? Hi, I know that feel all too well. It's one of the worst things. Tell me about it! Didn't you say you read manga? Um, I used to, quite often. I, uh, think we talked about this yesterday. Huff, yeah, yeah. What else did you say you like to read? The nervousness isn't going away. Uh, b -b -b romance adventure books? Huh. <sighs> Go figure, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I then look over to the left a little bit and see a lone volume of manga. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it on my hand. Dude, what the hell? I was gonna look at that. Not cool. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the wrist. Aha! Much better! That says ah, uh, not aha, uh -huh, you fool. Seeing a box that was one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. We just talked about this. I can't help but take a look at the box that she's admiring. Parfait Girls. It kind of reminds me of that one series, Wedding Peach. Wait! You're not going to judge me over something like this? Oh, you're, you're not going to judge me over something like this? Intonation. No way. That'd be mean of me to do that. Have you watched Wedding Peach, by the way? No, I only read the manga, and that was back when I was in middle school. What's someone like you doing watching that show anyways? I'll watch whatever I want to, okay? Ugh, what have I gotten myself into? Hmm, because it looks like somewhat interesting. My nervousness has jumped up quite a bit due to worrying about what her response will be. Fine, whatever, dummy. But anyways, Wedding Peach isn't quite... <laughs> her calling me a dummy is making me a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, we just met yesterday and all. Wait, hang on. What is Siori doing over there? <laughs> Don't get too disappointed! In fact... Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. You want to read the first volume? Huh? Sorry, I got distracted. What was that last part? I always hate whenever this happens. Jeez, this better not happen when we read. We? She shoves the book right into my hands. What is happening? Hmm? The cover of this manga features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. Yeah. Three of the characters on here kind of look like Momoko, Scarlet, Hinagiku, and you Don't just stand there! I have no idea who those people were. Natsuki takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her. I'm guessing she's trying to tell me to sit down next to her. At least read the first chapter with me so you know what it's like. Um, sure. Uh, it's my first day of the club and I'm always sitting next to a girl. Oh, pardon me. Reading manga I've never read before. Never in my life would I have thought something like this would happen. Maybe not with the girl I wanted, but I should get through the first chapter. It's the least I can do. Maybe I won't feel as uncomfortable. I open the manga and begin reading. Not gonna lie, this isn't that bad. I don't mind the slice of life genre. There has been a time or two where I could feel Natsuki peering over my shoulder, but I made sure to purposely not pay attention to that. Besides, I kind of want to see what Sayori is doing over there. I can't help but look away from the manga, unconsciously placing my left thumb over what panel I was reading. What's she doing over there? Are those colored pencils? Then <laughs> sink. Did I read the, read the beginning? Oh, what? I instinctively look to my right a little bit. Ugh! Do you always spay us out like that? You're just as bad as Sayori sometimes. Am I really? Yeah, sorry. I was actually wondering what she's up to. Oh, for the love of! If you're so worried about Sayori, then give me my manga back! Nice going, Hallie. I apprehensively hand her back her manga, but she snatches it on my hands. 
A small surge of anger rushes through me at her sudden reaction, but it dissipates not long after. Well, fine then. With that, I get up from under the windowsill and start walking towards the northwest corner of the clubroom and approach Sayori. As I suspected, she does have a box of colored pencils out and is drawing on a piece of paper. I knew it. I tilt my head a little bit to the left to get a glimpse of what she's drawing. Hey, Sayori, what you drawing? Oh, hi, Ali! Mark and I were just talking about the festival that's coming up. She said it would be best if I made some posters for the event. The festival? Oh, right. The festival. An event that happens once every school year, and it happens to be around that time of year. Last school year, I didn't have a very good time at the festival. Everything that happened didn't turn out the way I expected them to, which led to that day last year being quite disappointing. Oh god, oh god. Maybe the fortune teller I went to was right about that day. The festival, eh? It is about that time of year. Just like I thought to myself a moment ago. Will this club be doing anything for it, or will we have a free day? Sierra continues to color in the heart she's drawing on her poster. Of course we're going to be doing something. We think we're going to have Natsuki big cupcakes for the event. And Monica said that we're going... Looks like Sayori's red colored pencil tip broke, mid-sentence, and she now has a face of mild bewilderment. Was that the neck snap noise is sped up? <laughs> oh, I know how I can help. I extend my left hand towards her. May I sharpen that for you? Sayori starts to blush a little bit, thanks me, and hands me the colored pencil. Turn towards the main clubroom door. I happen to walk by Yuri, who has her head in a book. Oh, that's right, she gave me a book of hers. I never bothered to see what it was called. Dots. Wait, hang on. I can't believe what I'm seeing. She's actually reading the book I brought in. I stop walking for a second to bask in the rare sight that is in front of me. Wait, don't. People will think I'm staring. I make my way to the pencil sharpener and subconsciously start the sharpening process. But the image of Yuri reading my book stays fresh in my mind. I wonder what part she's on. Well, wait. If she started reading it just now, then hopefully the beginning, right? How silly would that be if she started reading on page 47 or something? I must find out. Leaving the pencil sharpener, I put the pencil in my right pocket and make my way over towards Yuri. She seems to be completely into the book I brought in. I carefully stop myself to her right side. She hasn't noticed me yet? Huh. How should I get her attention? I'm feeling nervousness build up yet again just by standing close to her. Scratching my head trying to think of what to do, I'm still somewhat amazed that she hasn't moved. What was it she said yesterday? Something about surreal horror? No, that wasn't... Yes, but no. <sighs> <sighs> Yuri then looks to where I am and sees me standing somewhat close to her. Ah! Um... I didn't mean for that to do the trick. But it's alright, just remain calm. I'm sorry, Yuri, I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, it's fine. I thought I'd check out what you brought for me today. So thanks again. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? <laughs> no problem. I subconsciously bring my left hand to the back of my head and start scratching again. I thought it was a good idea. There's an awkward silence between me and her. Come on, think of something. Um, th that book was one of my favorites when I was growing up. It's a miracle that it's lasted as long as it has since my parents brought it back when I was in junior high school. Yuri's face pricks up for a bit. Oh? Your parents bought this for you? Wait, did it say brought or bought? I might be losing my mind here. Also. Bought! It said bought. I don't remember what I said. We're just gonna keep going. Yeah, it's rather sweet. The smile on my face never leaves. I can feel a slight burning feeling right after she said the word sweet. <laughs> I suppose so. So, um... It's hard to make eye contact when I'm around a pretty girl like this. Most of the time, eye contact is something that just doesn't happen often. Not unless I force myself to, or else I'm with someone I'm quite comfortable around. I'm not saying I'm uncomfortable around, Yuri. But we only met yesterday, for goodness sake. And believe it or not, I tend to think more clearly and to think about sentence structuring better when I'm constantly looking around, looking at nothing in particular. You said you're enjoying the book so far? Yes, I am. This may not be my preferred genre, but this feels like a breath of fresh air. What could be her preferred genre, then? Well, the beginning does start out a little bit slow, but once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. Oh, is that so? I should probably take your word for it. The description on the back was a little bit... vague. All I really understand from it was that an elephant and her group of friends stopped the jungle from being taken over. Yeah, that sounds about right. The stupidest of ideas start appearing in my mind. Hey, 
Uh, may I ask you something? Mm -hmm. What is it? Go for it. C -c -c Could I, uh, may I sit next to you and read alongside with you? I can feel my face burning a little harder. Uh, um... Oh no, I don't like where this is going. It's just... There are some things in the story I'd like to point out that will make more sense later on. That's... well... That spoilers you, silly Billy. I guess that's alright. Nice. I smile and give her a confirming nod. That being done, I quietly grab a chair from a nearby desk and place it next to Yuri's side. Right side. It isn't until I take a seat next to her when I realize just how close I am to her. I think I know a CG is about to come. Another awkward silence commences until Yuri speaks up. I'm sorry. Huh? Is something wrong? This is, this is something I'm very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. Hmm. Well, I'll try not to be too annoying then. No promises. Alright. But how can we both read at the same time? Oh, oops. I guess I didn't think that far ahead. I noticed that Yuri is still holding my book with both hands, like a normal human would. I can feel the gears spinning in my head. This lasts for roughly six seconds, all while staring indirectly at the book before I begin speaking. Here, let me see the book real quick. I have an idea. Without a word, she hands my book back to me. If you're still worried about Sayori, then give me my manga back! The flashback from earlier plays in my head, when Natsuki forcefully took her manga out of my hands, and how that made me feel. I'd better be considerate to Yuri and learn from Natsuki's mistakes. I carefully take the book back from her. Alright, so... Here's how this is going to go. I'm going to take control of the right side, and you'll be responsible for the left side. Look at where my right hand is, and correspond with your left hand, and on your respective corner. Dots. And with that, we're sitting side by side. Both of us holding the book together, huddled a little close, but I don't mind. The view really isn't that bad. Not only is Harry in the corner of my vision, but I can read both pages with barely a struggle. Well, I suppose this works. How did you think of this? Uh, I have no idea, but it's working, right? I then realize what situation I'm in. I'm sitting rather close to probably one of the most adorable girls I've ever met in my life, and we're reading one of my favorite books. Sure, I may have said, thought, that I didn't mind. This is kind of intense. Here he giggles a little bit. I suppose. Anyways, where did I leave off? Oh, right here. I watch her point her finger to what page she's on to see where she is in the story. Ah. Awfully close to the end of page 9, which is where my right hand is. Ah uh, yes, I remember this part. Don't worry, it gets less and less boring from this point onward. Mary then looks over to me. I can ever so slightly feel her breath invading the lower half of my face. Boring? Holly, uh, I thought you said you liked this book. Ah oh, jeez, I really need to think of my words better. I do! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say boring. No, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have said that. Also, are you ready? A bunch of everything raced through my head at a million miles per hour after she asked that. Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. Th that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. Oh, you. You're, you're silly, and also considerate at the same time. No need to worry about me. I've read this once or twice before, but I'll still read alongside you. Suddenly, I feel I was a little too forward with calling her silly. I hope this doesn't make her mad. Well... If you say so. We continue reading. Every so often, I'll point out a certain character in the story and explain to her what kind of role that character plays. Harry no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We manage to at least get through the first and second chapter. Even so, turning each page like this has an interesting feeling to it. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it fly over to her side and her catching it in return. Hey, Hallie. I am drawn out of my reading trance and look over to Yuri. Our eyes meet for a little bit, and surprisingly enough, this isn't uncomfortable. Yes, Yuri? D do you like animals as well? Hmm. Oh, right. The theme of this book. I mean, yeah, they're cool. I'm more of a cat person, to be honest. Wait, she didn't ask about cats specifically, though. Well, I guess we have something in common, then. Oftentimes, I like to go to the lake over by the park to relax and watch the butterflies. When the elephant in this book went to the lake, it reminded me of one of my special places. It can be a good source of inspiration at times. I am... I'm rambling, aren't I? I'm sorry. A dumb smile is slowly creeping its way onto my face. Hey, no need to worry about that. I... kind of liked what you were saying just now. 
I would have never considered any kind of places of inspiration until just now. Well, I guess it's alright then. I think I know it'll score me some brownie points. Besides, the least I can do is listen to you. It's the gold rule, after all. After all, it's two words, sir. I don't mind listening to you at all. Wait, holy crap, I just said that out loud. My face and hers takes on an interesting shade of pink? Crimson? Nah, that's too dark. The thanks, Allie. She then looks back onto the page she was reading, as do I. Reading through this book again brings back memories of when I was much younger. I would cuddle up to my mom, and she would read to me before bedtime. Granted, we never quite held a book together like this, but it's nice to think about how that made me feel back then. How funny would that be if six-year-old me and my mom tried holding a book like how me and Yuri are right now? My nostalgia trip has ended abruptly by a voice that isn't Yuri's. Ahem! Yuri and I are snapped back into reality, when we, and we both look up. Still holding our respective sides of the book, we see Siori standing in front of us. She looks a bit annoyed. What could she possibly want? I know. Ellie, I would like my pencil back, please. Oh, Bob sagged. I completely forgot I had that. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, Siori. I can't help but feel flustered and lower my head a little bit. I take my right hand off the book and reach into my pocket to give her the colored pencil back. Once Siori takes her pencil back, her annoyed look return, returns into any mischievous one. Oh, Yuri! Looks like you found yourself a good breeding partner! Huh? Er, huh? Why does Sayori think that's so funny? I hope I'm not bad at reading- or bad at being a reading partner. Sayori, I, uh... 3.39pm. I guess we're Monica again, right? Is that accurate? Ah, there we go. Another bar of music written down on my music sheet. Only four more sheets left to go. I stand up from my desk and go to look at the clock, but I'm distracted by what Sayori is doing. She's hanging out with Hallie. That's weird, I would have guessed he'd want to hang out with Yuri, considering how different they both are from everybody else. I wonder how those two will get along. Eh, never mind that. What time is it anyways? The clock is directly above the chalkboard, which is where I'm heading. How convenient. It's 3.40 already. Well, time flew by pretty fast today. It's time to start poem sharing, so I quickly head over to the center of the room, clearing my throat to get everyone's attention. Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Looks like everyone is preparing for this. Sarah walks over to her corner of the room to her bag and grabs her poem. I then look over towards the closet and see that Natsuki is putting away her manga. In the incorrect spot. <sighs> All of a sudden, I feel someone tugging on my right sleeve. It's Hallie, and he's looking down at the ground. Oh no, why does he look upset? Hallie, are you nervous about sharing? I keep on forgetting everything today. Maybe I was right about yesterday. Oh, what's the matter? I forgot to write a poem last night. I'm really sorry, Monica. I had a feeling- I had a feeling something like this would happen. <sighs> well, I'll let you off the hook this one time, because it is your first day in the club. I'll make sure you won't feel left out, though. How does reading everyone's poems sound today? He then looks up to me, with his frown pretty much gone. I... I would like that, Monica. Good. Besides all that, are you having a good time so far? Well, I got to spend time with everyone here today. Even if I did make two of them mad. <laughs> this better not be a recurring theme. I see. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? There's an awkward silence as he seems to look around at a few different spots before speaking up. D does that mean I can tell you if something about the club is bothering me? Since you're the president and all? Of course, silly. That's what I'm here for. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. Oh, come on, Monica. I'm sure you've done well. I want to see. <laughs> all right, all right. I reach in my bag. Well, my poem, I hand it over to him. However, it seems we're about uh, out of time for this recording session, so we're going to stop here for now. We're going to save in this slot, and we'll pick up next time with more Our Castle Falls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.